Oh shit, what's up boys? We're back. It's Rocket League Volleyball Workshop Show Matches Week 16. If you're seeing these on YouTube, join the Twitch chat, twitch.tv slash Lee Furnace, every single Monday night starting around 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And we've got a good one tonight. We've got the boys, Prism, and Mercy. And he has brought in some ringers to play in theory. I'm not even going to pronounce the name right. It's like Aegis, 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 and uh, Geoids. That'll be the main matchup for $40. Here are the rules, same as always. Every game is a best of five series. Each game is first to 10 win by two. You got three touches per side, a limited boost, and you can follow up your touches. No blocking on kickoffs, no pinch kickoffs. It just typically count as two hits, yada, yada, yada. We'll get into that if we have to. Let's get it going. But you can see we've got SSL, GC3, and two more SSLs all as their peak ranks. If... Whatever, if using the thing. So... I'm excited. I'm gonna see how this one goes here. On the kickoff, already utilizing some fakes. He just popping it up, but Prism using that middle wall. He knows what's up. He's played in two or three of these, I believe. Two of these so far. He already has a little bit of experience under his belt. He knows the power of the middle wall. I also saw he's posted some clips these days on the old TikTok. He's playing with his other friends. They've been training. Getting a little bit better. Presumably. One more hit for the boys, and he plays it to space. We might be seeing a little bit of lag already on the server. Not quite sure. Might have to restart the lobby. Has been up for a while for that entire undercard matchup. How the hell did that stay up? Doesn't matter. Does not get up high enough for it to make a difference. And, and pretty intense first kickoff, first serve rally there. Back and forth for a while. Took 42 in-game seconds. Geoids scoring for Orange to put the first goal on the board. We got a 1-0 game. Prism on the kickoff. Noni, Noni, Noni underscore Baloney, Noni Baloney in Twitch chat asking me if I'm down to party up. We are doing workshop show matches tonight, so I will not be partying up. But I do play with viewers on my Wednesday streams, so if you want to hop in on Wednesdays, do some 1v1s, some custom, uh, private lobbies and all that good stuff. But while I was talking, Prism spiking that one down in just about 10 in-game seconds. Time is irrelevant, but it's still fun to talk about it. Puts things in perspective. Prism rocking the real alpha boost and a great return. You can already see what I was praising Feed and Quack for with those team plays. It's almost a requirement and a default mindset here for these higher level players. They're all well within SSL and multiple game modes, and they are making pass plays. And that right there, Geoid saw the space, and he hits it perfectly. Neither player, Prism or Mercy, they're both fast, but they're not that fast. They don't get there in time. One to two. These points are hard fought, hard contested. Every single one needs to be worked for. Way fewer mistakes. Even out of players like Geoids and Aegis who, you know, I'm sure they've played some volleyball before. A lot of high-level players dip their toes in workshops from time to time. But they are already on top of the ball. Literally. As they increase their lead. 3-1 to one now. Z-Speed, how's it going? Welcome in, my man. <coughs> Excuse me. Prism and Mercy need to spread out a little bit. This one might be tough. It is going to not... They're not going to recover from that one. It is now 1-4. to four. Geoids is putting in the work. He has three of the four goals. I don't know much about this guy, but I can already tell he's insane. And you can never count out someone with the Killua profile picture, especially... When he's in the, uh, the, the lightning god speed mode, whatever the, whatever the hell it's called, assassin mode. It's not called lightning mode. What's it called? It's like... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Irrelevant. Mercy. Scoring off the kickoff, I think. 
Yeah, Geoids uh, definitely thought that, that his teammate, that Aegis, was going for it, and that just did not happen. The fake kickoff, will it work? No, sir. You gotta get it over the middle net. That's a tough one. Although that would have been a really good rip misdirection. If that would have gone over, that would have sunk right in the corner perfectly. God dang. I saw the vision. Just did not work out. They take a nice easy one there, just pop it high, give themselves some time. That's not the greatest catch. They have one more hit. And he does not get the pinch that he wanted. Mercy getting credit with that one off the kickoff. They brought it back to a tie game. <clears throat> we are starting to see some mistakes now. I was praising them all for being near flawless at the beginning. But you can't keep that up forever. And it is, uh, you know, seeing some spacing issues, which I'm not surprised. It's a bigger field than you think, especially when you can't let it hit the ground. It did look like they double commit the kickoff. And Prism just a little bit off on that angle. Doesn't quite get there. Four to five. See what they can do here. One thing to know with Prism, he's played in a few of the last couple matchups. Last week being uh, on teams with Creams, and they took on the other two FOB professional RLCS players of Jacob and Spider. And Prism was definitely one of the players on the map, on the field, that was making a few mistakes here and there. I'm not saying that's a call him out. I am saying that the consistency is tough on these maps, especially the best of five format that we've got going on here at Workshop Show Matches featuring Rocket League. And it's not like there's a proper rotation necessarily, so it's tough. A just getting credit for this one. Let's see what happened. I'm kind of talking myself out of uh, focus here. Off the ceiling. If you can get it to kind of spike off the ceiling like that, you are feeling good. And that's what he did. It's just very hard to recover. Comes down fast. We're using regular ball physics, so it drops hard. Geoids. Very easy return there. Mercy's gonna pop it up. Prism. Go for the spike here. Geoids was there, but it falls right down. Okay, a little bit of a lucky bounce there on the uh, corner. Right before it uh, hits the boundary where it goes all the way down through the floor, right? Very lucky in their favor. We're getting a little rally going back and forth, back and forth. Ooh. Ooh. Mercy, a little bit unfortunate there. Kind of, I don't want to say ceiling pinch, but definitely close to one. It did gain speed like a pinch would. Came down fast. Prism just could not get underneath it. Four to eight. They're getting dangerously close here to that... 10 point score line, win by two. Ballsy kickoff, but it does go over. Geoids is just an animal on the returns for kickoff so far this game. He's all over the field, but he is a force. All of his hits have power. Unless I'm just, uh, unless I'm falling victim to recency bias here. I feel like he's just been smacking them down left and right. And they are on game point here in game number one. Four to nine. They get a tenth goal. That is it. And they're gonna get it. Aegis pops it up and it just falls right between the two of them on the blue team. Let's look at this here one more time. Off the ceiling. I already said how freaking dangerous that is and this is another example, man. Just goes right down. If you're not already in the perfect position, it's going down, it's going to score. That's going to be it for game one. Aegis and Geoid coming out hot. They are going to take this one. We're just going to roll right into game two here. I'd still like to think that Mer Mercy and Prism have a little bit of experience, at least from Prism's end. He plays, or he has played in two of these series before, and I've seen him playing with his buddies for his own content, so I don't know. I think I think uh 
He's going to really fall into a groove here. Mercy's helping him out, of course, and we lose replays. That's unfortunate. Lost replays rip. I would probably like to start a new lobby, but it's always a little bit of a risk here working with Rocket Host. But so far, the lobbies have gone up pretty quickly and easily. We can always go back to this one, I think. Unless it fully freaking uh, loses out. Age is getting that one. It's one to one. I must start a new lobby. Don't leave this one until I say so in the discord please I'm gonna leave this one and start a new one and then give them the go ahead if the starting of a new lobby fails we would have to go back to that one so that's why I don't want them to leave yet all right new lobby is up theoretically I got to join it real quick fingers crossed here because sometimes it gives a little bit of an issue sometimes it doesn't this one is not going to look at this Look at that. We're right in. I'm going to wait for it to start. Make sure that it's working. Make sure that we got replays on the goals. Pretty sure the dingo. Wee! Just going to kind of pop it. Oh boy. Look at that. Okay. Hell yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Excited. Um, okay, I've tagged them all. We're going to get them in here. Sorry for the slight technical difficulties, but that is what it is. You know, just what it is. Just how it be, how it do when we're playing with mods. Kind of, more or less. With uh, workshops on good old Unreal Engine 3 video games like Rocket League. This is why UE5 will hopefully, fingers crossed, be a big improvement. We'll see. We will see. But that is in the future. So we will wait for these guys to hop in. Hopefully they can get in. Yep. They all four just hopped in. Um, and of course I got to give myself a little bit of admin perms. Let's get it. All right, we are back. It was one to one. So here it is one to one and the teams are ready and they're playing. We will have replay. So that'll be good. Prism waiting on this one. Mercy comes in and takes it. He's feeling good, feeling dangerous out there on the field. Geoids use that first touch, not the best. He's just gonna pop it up. Plenty of room for Geoids to work with, but it gets spiked back. Got ourselves a rally back and forth already. Interesting play, he pops it up though. Ooh, Prism with the guard on that middle wall in the corner. They, oh man, that's a tough one to give up, but he was freaking primed and ready. Slams that one down, takes the lead two to one. I'm liking that play from Prism. The middle wall is a freaking third teammate for some of these players, man. If you can utilize it, jump off it at the right time, get those spikes, play it to space where you need to. It's just so advantageous to learn how to play off that middle wall. And it's different. Oh my god, he did not go above the three hit limit despite the air dribble type flip reset play. I'm gonna get absolutely dogged for mislabeling that mechanic right there, but that was insane by Prism. Did not lead to the point yet, but then again, Aegis flying past it. Prism getting credit. What a freaking play. We don't see a lot of those more advanced mechanics, not that a flip reset is that crazy, but you don't see it a lot because we've got the three touch limit. You can't just go for some crazy freestyle stuff. You're going to blow past that three touch limit in no time. So it's really cool to see players pull it off. We saw uh, Rhyolite successfully do a ceiling uh, flip reset musty type move. I don't know, 
back in like week 10. It was pretty hype. Geoids though, great kickoff. Prism just uh, misread that one, flies right past him and bounces in. Three to two, still anyone's game here in game number two. <laughs> I'm laughing as if I would do any better, but Aegis did not get the power or the direction he was looking for on that. Just kind of ended up popping it back. Uh, own goal action. No worries. Four to two. Still early. A little regain. Also, I never hit H to get that crap off my screen, but it's off now, so we're good. Z Speed, if you're still here in the Twitch chat, hope you're doing well, man. And if you're in the TikTok chat, hop on over to the Twitch chat. Twitch.tv slash the furnace. It's in the bio. The link is there. Click it, my dude. Mercy almost had a little touch on it, but it was too late. He may have touched it here. Uh, that would have been an own goal anyway. Great placement to space. Yeah, he just... He nipped it, but it was going in anyway. Four to three. Prism Rock in the SSG decal. I'm liking it. I'm not loving it though, because that would be McDonald's. But um, tsh, fantastic. Not sure what happened there, but Mercy is going to get credit. Good kickoff. I think they just kind of lost communication a little bit. No, I'll tell you what happened. When it kind of rolls down and around the curvature of the back and side corner walls and all that stuff, it it's just hard to get it back up to a point where you can get it over the net. And you see it right there, he just couldn't get it done. This is gonna be a tough one. One hit left. But Prism, he knows what to do. He gets it over. Ooh. The team play was there. I saw. You know, I saw what they were going for. Played a little bit too hard into the sidewall. Nice pop by Aegis. And Geoids goes for a second pass. Yeah, slammed into the wall. A little bit too hard. We got the 6 to 3 Sigma ratio scoreline. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The famous 6 to 3 scoreline. You'll love to see it. Three and a half minutes, pretty much, of regulation game time. Not that time matters. It's fun to talk about. Good hit by Mercy, good hit by Geoids, and a pretty good hit by Prism. I'm sensing a pattern. They're all really good players, and they're making good hits. Geoids popping it up. Plenty of time for Aegis. Is that going to get over the net? I don't think so. They're going to need one more. Yeah, not even close. But they get it. Prism there to pop it right back. Keeping them on their toes, do not give them any time to reset and get themselves ready for that return hit. So what we see forcing and causing the most amount of mistakes is when you put the pressure on, play it down towards the ground with speed into space. Force them to make desperation or speed flip jump lunges just to hope that they can get under the ball. Back corner wall also very hard to read at times. But G always does a great job there and sets it up for his teammate. But it's coming right back at him. Again, not a lot of time to react. And ultimately, it goes in. Prism extending that lead 7-3. Almost a reversal of what we saw in game number one. Where Orange Team was starting to extend the lead here at this point. Because they did end up winning 10-4 I believe. Now we have a situation where Blue might win 10 to 4. But I am getting ahead of myself. We've seen swings in the momentum very quickly. Definitely don't want to write these guys off, and they get another one here to bring it within three. Closing the gap. Prism and Mercy Goats, and that is Augie's X. How you doing? Thanks for hopping into the Twitch chat. Hope you're having a good Monday.
<laughs> Haley's saying hi. And I'm burping. Meanwhile, Aegis. Get another one for Orange. A little bit closer, 7 to 5. Oh, Prism just kind of hesitated a little bit. Misread that, uh, the ball, I guess. Best way of putting it. Good kickoff by Mercy. Geoids is there. Oh, no. Is he lagging? I'm not really seeing too much lag on his ping, at least, but he's flying by the ball. I'm not real. <laughs> NPC. <laughs> He's having fun with it, and that's the most important thing. We're doing some competitive stuff here at Workshop Show Matches featuring Rock League. We got some small cash prizes, but at the end of the day, we're having fun with the non-traditional way to play Rock League. That's what it's all about. Prism gonna get this one though. Eight to six. There we go. We're uh man, it was like three unanswered goals there for a minute by the orange team. But not the best hit by Geoids. Too fast towards that middle wall. Not enough vertical movement there. It's gonna go right down. My nose is itchy. Twitch chat doesn't have to see me waste my time scratching it, but TikTok is not loving their view. Age is popping. Geoid's popping. Prism popping. Mercy's popping it. Everyone's popping it up. But who's gonna get this one? Decent setup. Does Mercy finish? No problem. Not even a question. And that was a questionable hit. But they do have one more. Will it go over? I was going to say, I think that may have been four hits, but it doesn't really matter. Because Mercy is right there on the middle wall to smack it down. An absolute stuffing. I did not realize it was already Thanksgiving. Jesus. Nine to six, game point here for Mercy and Prism in game number two. They want this one. Not the best hit though, but Mercy is there to redirect it and that's gonna come down fast, but Aegis does stay calm and get it back over. I have a feeling this is gonna be quite a big rally. These players have a tendency to clutch up when it, their backs are against the wall when it really matters. Both teams are gonna have to fight to close this game out. Great pop, let's see what Mercy can do. Plays to the back corner, not bad. He just needs to get under it, he does end up getting a favorable bounce, but that was three hits. And they are gentlemen, they let it fall 10 to six, and that is game number two going in favor of Prism and Mercy as I give it to him on the board, 10 to six. 4 to 10 in game 1, 10 to 6 in game 2, if I'm remembering that game 1 scoreline correctly. A little bit of a role reversal here, but still close. Still very close. It's going to be very interesting to see who takes this one. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up with a game 5, but we're just going to move right on into game 3 here. Like I said, after... Or before game one and before game two, I still think that Prism has the experience to push them over the edge and get this win. And that second game kind of proved it. They got themselves going and got it done. Ah, oh, yeah, that was the third hit. Or was it? There we go. Yeah, yeah. That was the third hit. But, gentlemen, as always, they let it come back and hit the ground. First strike going to the orange team. Almost 30 seconds in. Yeah, these rallies are are quite a bit longer than we were seeing in the undercard, which is my favorite part about getting players of this level in here. These SSLs, they just have a way of stepping into an unfamiliar game mode like volleyball. I will continue to be a broken record on this. It's very different. But yet, the skill level that these guys bring in, it's just so adaptable. They know what to do give them a tough rule set and they adapt and play well and they even took the first game here assuming that Aegis and Geoids uh, have not really played volleyball before. 
long-winded way of saying that these guys are really good at the game, and they're gonna take the second goal as well. Mercy's popping that one back, and just came down a little bit too fast. Oh, super awkward. Actually, Prism was there, and it just seems like zero power on that. He almost caught the ball perfectly. Very unfortunate little, little hit there. Kind of watching intensely, taking a sip of the G Fuel. Geoids popping it up. That's going to be a tough one. Is that rolling over? No. It will not. One, two. Prism spamming, no. I think that was actually long, longer ago. Not relating to this current play, but whatever. <clears throat> Voice is getting raspy because these are intense, ladies and gentlemen. Aegis on the kickoff. And it worked. Mercy gets a hit but ends up kind of own going it there. Very lateral here on both hits. It went from the left side to the right side. Literally hit both sides. It's a tough one. One to three. Still anyone's game. It's early. Early days. Relax. Okay. Sheesh, relax. Stop getting ahead of yourself. Is that coming down? It is coming back down on their own side. I don't think, uh, who was it up there? So Prism was chilling in the back. I think that he, oh no, I guess he moved. He moved immediately. He just couldn't get there in time. The field is a lot bigger than it looks. I will continue to say it. Ooh, Prism. Okay, wait, it's still up. My jump. Still up. Ah, I feel like he could have waited a little bit. But that's hindsight. <laughs> He's having fun with it. He's having fun with it, doing a little bit of dribbling. <laughs> Finally rolls in. One to five. Aegis and Geoids. Kind of running away with this one. I don't know. It's still too early to tell, but... A 5-1 to one lead is a healthy lead. So we'll see if Prism and Mercy can kind of turn this one around. If not, we are going to be going into a game four. I mean, we're going there no matter what anyway. But you get the point. It's going to be a quick one if it ends up being 1-10. to 10. The little wall pinch of sorts. Flyby? Was that a flyby? Eh. Voice is gone. Yeah, Aegis uh, pops it up, and then I think he went to... Well, can't really tell who's going for it. Yeah, he went for another hit, follow-up, and just kind of didn't... <laughs> just didn't line it up right. Sometimes it happens. You hate to see it. Unless, of course, you're on the blue team. Then you're excited. Happy to be on the board again here. It was looking like they couldn't get anything going. That might be enough momentum. It only takes a couple really goofy mistakes to ruin your confidence. At least for me. <laughs> At least when I'm solo queuing, okay? Aegis popped the geoids. Geoids popping it just barely over the net. You could tell Prism probably expected it to kind of scrape and bounce off the middle wall, but it, it makes it over. Puts him in a weird spot. And they are now. Up two to six, six to two. Will we see the Sigma ratio scoreline of six to three, three to six? We will. Prism spiking it down right out of reach. I believe this was Aegis who almost had it here. Yes, it was, but Prism, he saw the space and he capitalizes. Three to six, the Sigma ratio scoreline. Yet again, the third game so far this evening to have this scoreline. Love to see it. One of them in the undercard, of course. Aegis taking his time, lining it up, and then going for it. Maybe a little bit of mental warfare on the kickoff coming in. A little bit of strategy involved. 
for the most part, the kickoffs are pretty straightforward, but if you can get people, get them on their toes, it can definitely help. That's a good spike. Prism's there. He has another one. Let's see how they respond. A little bit of an awkward hit. They may be out of touches. I gotta believe they're out of touches now, and they are. Prism, getting credit with that one. Four to six. Yeah, man, you let the ball kind of roll around by the middle net, middle wall, whatever. It just gets awkward. Kind of all there is to say about it. More mistakes coming out of both teams here. Double commit plus the team bump. Not what you like to see. Lining it up, playing it to Aegis. Aegis plays it back, but Mercy is there. can do here the redirect is it over it is and to space but Aegis is there haven't seen as many team plays as there were in game number one they came out strong both teams looking for those pass plays and now they're kind of realizing that hey I just got to get a really strong powerful spike to space I don't need my teammate I think they're forgetting how easy it is to redirect it to space with some pass plays. And they were going for it there at the end, but a little bit of an awkward, uh, I don't know, amount of power on that hit. Yeah. I think Mercy just wasn't quite ready for it. Ends up whipping the pass. And it ends up being an own goal. Four to eight. We're getting dangerously close to a game point here. For Aegis and Geoids, the orange team feeling good about game three. Even more so now as Prism kind of own goals just fails to get underneath it correctly. I, I feel like a little bit of his traditional Rocket League muscle memory kicked in there. He wanted to dribble it, take it up the wall. And unfortunately, we're not playing regular Rocket League. But Mercy saving the game, at least for another goal here, another point. Because it is still game point for the Orange team. First to 10 win by two, and they are at nine and are ahead by four now. <laughs> Trying the Furnace kickoff. Or, or, you know, the Musty Foot kickoff. Does not get there, though. But a regular kickoff does the trick. Mercy. Guarding that middle wall, he loves it, and it is particularly strong on these types of plays, but unfortunately that hit was not down enough. I'm watching intensely, and that is gonna That's gonna do it. Prism is going to get that one. Six to nine now. bit of an awkward bounce and he had to also watch out for his teammate if he hit it too high it would have bounced into him too low and it goes in and ends up being too low so tough position to play from for sure that's a fantastic kickoff but mercy is there prism's now going up one more hit he needs to find it he does does it work though mercy is ready no Mer oh wait Wait, I was going to say he own goal, but he didn't. It stays up. Oh my gosh. They are going to survive this. Just kidding. Oh my god. What a freaking turn of events. Oh my gosh. It just kept staying up. Insane. 6 to 10 and Aegis and Geoids take game 3. That... That was insane. I cannot believe that that ball stayed up. I uh, I was sure that he had owned goal. It honestly didn't matter. They end up giving up the goal anyway, but that 
What a way to end that game. And we are moving into game four. Orange taking. Oh, he says he's changing preset. But he's back. I almost spilled my drink. Director Cam, what are you doing? There we go. <laughs> Heading into game four here. Prism changed his preset. He was really... I guess he wanted the Reaper wheels. He wasn't feeling himself. As he uh, goes down in the series after that last game. We'll see if it makes a difference here in game four. That's two hits right there. Gotta be careful. Doesn't matter. Geoids was there to assist. The Fennec duo. Looking to close this series out in Prism. <laughs> Prism killing it. It was three nerd. Is he calling me a nerd? Are you listening to me this whole time, Geoids? You son of a bitch. I don't know. Maybe he was just talking. <laughs> <clears throat> they're playing well. Geoids are playing well, if you can hear me. I'm impressed. Mostly because I know nothing about you, so I just assume you suck. That's a pretty dumb way of looking at life. But <laughs> just a guy I don't know who this is. Even though he's friends, or at least Rocket League friends with Prism, so he's got to be good. And, you know, SSL hunt in ones, so. <laughs> if you're SSL at ones, you're probably pretty good at this game. Says the guy who struggles to get to champ in ones. Golf clap for me. And uh, I've been babbling. It's now 2 0. Off to a. Off to a nice lead here. I can tell Prism really wants to go for some air dribble plays. I feel like it's probably killing him. Knowing that he can't do the traditional mechanics that he's so used to doing. The muscle memory. His thumbs are ready to do it. But it's against the rules, or at least very hard to do within the rules. I've also got a guy named named Flair VFX by followers Prime's viewers on this website, dude. What a sick first time chatter in Twitch! I cannot wait to ban you. What a sick account! I love that people still make bot accounts to try to sell followers on Twitch. Very interesting marketing strategy for those websites. And another interesting strategy. For the orange team to leave that massive hole open because Prism comes in and spikes it down to finally get on the board here in game four. One to three to favor the orange team. <sighs> Need some more water. For the last little bit of the. of the G fuel. The G fuel? It's all about the gefuel around these parts. It's all about geoids getting it done. This man's killing it. I'm impressed. It's the Kilowatt pick. You just can't beat players with the Kilowatt pick. Profile pick. Especially their in-game pick. Alright. One to four. They're starting to run away with it again, but... If the pattern holds true, we will see Prism and Mercy take this game and send it to a game five. That's a questionable hit, and that is definitely not what they wanted to see. Was that within the three hit rule? It must have been. I am really bad at keeping track of the number of hits. A fantastic recovery if it was illegal, but then again, Prism just kind of smacks that down. I'm not sure what happened. Did they try to... They purposely missed that? It looks like he turned away from it. I am not really sure what just happened there. Two to four. No sweat for the orange team as they give that one up. And they're gonna give this one up too. Three to four. What happened here? He said fake it. <laughs> I like when they start typing in the in the game chat. It's pretty funny. Just throwing each other under the bus. Feeding Quack do it all game long during the undercards. Check that video out as well if you're seeing this on YouTube. Feeding Quack running a gauntlet on the undercard. 
and always talking crap in the game chat. And that was, uh, is that Geoids just smacking it to the side? An absolute banger hit. Yeah. If it skims the ceiling, it just comes down too hard, too fast, and, uh, not really anything you can do unless your teammate is in a perfect position and ready for it, which, I mean, why would they be? Four to four. We are tied up. Starting to regain some confidence in the blue team. Prism and Mercy. But that was a brutal, brutal block by Geoids on that middle net. He was just where he needed to be. All there is to it. He got it done. Nothing like getting a work email at 9.15 p.m. As if I'm gonna read that shit. LOL. Anyway, Aegis. Popping it right down. A surprisingly precise hit. You expect us to go a little bit further, and he just give it a little boop right down to space, right out of reach. Extending that lead, four to six now. We did not get the Sigma ratio scoreline of three to six or six to three here, but that's all right. Prism playing that middle wall pretty well, but it does go way over his head. Mercy, good placement. Prism pops it up. Mercy's gonna have to hit that center. This is going to be a tough one. Yeah. Very tough. That popped straight up. Needed to get it out a bit more towards the center of the field. Center of the court. Center of the... What do you call it? Volleyball court? I feel like court's the right word for it, right? Let I me mean, know what you think in the chat. Anyway, four to seven. Wow, whoops. I don't know what just happened. What What did happen? What was that? Is Mercy okay? Mercy just not playing? Is Mercy not playing? What the heck happened? No, he's playing now. Not quite sure what happened there. I am perplexed. Well, we are getting dangerously close to a series point here. Orange team up eight to four in game four, and they're already up two to one in the series. A couple more goals, and they take home a $40 cash prize. The team of one's mains, potentially with their SSL rank, really coming together well here. Seen a lot of pass plays, and that's gonna slam to the ceiling and slam down. Geoids doing what needs to be done time and time again. They both said no. Prism asked, have you played this before? Nope, and no were their responses. I find that hard to believe. I haven't either. <laughs> Prism. <laughs> Prism just lying. It's okay. These guys are cracked. We are on series point, by the way. Four to nine. A tenth goal will be the end of the run for the blue team. But Prism, great hit. Oh, and Aegis was there. Oh, I did not think he had that. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. Man, just when you think you've got him dead to rights, they still hold on for a little bit longer. But Prism does get that one. And, uh... Let's not change the fact that it is going to be series point until we get up to a tie game in 9 to 9 because it is first to 10 win by 2. It truly is uh, all, all hands on deck here. Backs against the wall. Uh, all hands on deck was not the right saying, but uh, I think you get the point I'm trying to make here. They got to fight for their life to stay alive in this series. Prism is poised. Mercy with a great hit there. Aegis popping it. Geoids another pop. Aegis. Flyby? 
Interesting. They're going for some fun aerial pass plays, team plays. Maybe this is the uh, the one's main kind of shining through in their play style. Just a little bit. They're going for pass plays, but whiffing just a little bit. Just a tad. Maybe they're not quite used to the aerial pass plays. But then again, as I'm thinking about what just came out of my mouth, they probably play a lot of twos and threes too. You don't just get to SSL and ones without also being good at other parts of the game. So that was probably a stinky opinion. Prism gonna find space under Geoids. Two, three, four, that is uh, way too many hits, so. Oh. What happened? Oh, Geoids is saying. Interesting. Let me go back and watch the VOD. Okay, okay. A little bit of an anticlimactic ending there. I think uh, Geoids is claiming, and I, I think he may be right, that Prism actually touched it a fourth time to get it over. Meaning that uh, that is a point. All right, GG's, fellas. Um, closing thoughts, though. That was a banger matchup. I don't know what else to say. I'm going to end the recording. GG's on that.